Claire had been waiting for her grandfather to come home from his rounds all day long. She kept running back to the window or looking through the high fence into the village street. Although she was already 17 and it wasn't the first time she'd been home alone, she was bored and a little scared. It was getting dark, fires were raging in the neighborhood forest, and grandfather still hadn't returned home. Grandpa Paul has been raising the girl alone since she was 13 years old because her mother died of leukemia and her father left the family when Claire was still a baby. Paul worked as a forester. He treated nature and its inhabitants very responsibly keeping perfect order in the area entrusted to him. That summer was scorching and dry, and thus forest fires were raging everywhere. The old man was very tired, trying to figure out what to do. The area of the fire was so immense that he felt powerless. Animals and birds were dying. Trees were catching fire like matches. The fire was spreading incredibly quickly, destroying everything in its path. All that was left to do was pray for the rain. Every day as Paul inspected his area, he could sense the smell of burning, saw the smoke getting closer, and heard the ominous crackling. But he still couldn't do anything to fight the elements. Still, he had a granddaughter waiting for him at home, so he had to take care of himself first. Otherwise, she'd end up all alone in the world. Having lost hope of waiting for her grandfather, Claire went to bed even though she felt very uneasy. Fatigue took its toll, and she fell asleep. Paul came home in the morning. The old man was soaking wet. Water was pouring off his shoulders. Finally, it started raining. The downpour will stop those merciless fires, the grandfather rejoiced, taking off his wet jacket. People are powerless, helicopters are powerless, and only nature knows how to restore balance. It's only too bad that so many animals have died already, but at least I could help some of them. Come with me, I'll show you. Claire followed her grandfather into the yard and was dumbfounded. There was a pack of wolves huddled in the barn. Don't be afraid, dear. They're scared themselves. Paul hastened to reassure his granddaughter. You won't believe it, but I was finishing my round by the river. I suddenly saw an adult wolf. The animal stood in the forest clearing, looking straight into my eyes with a silent plea. The wolf went away and then returned again as if asking me to follow him. So I did. I followed him into the clearing and saw a whole family of wolves. The she-wolf's eyes were red from the smoke. She picked up her ears. There were three puppies whining nearby, demanding for their mother to nurse them. A wall of fire was advancing and the wolf pack was doomed. I quickly beckoned the great predator toward the swamp and the wolf family followed me and they kept following me to the very house. I think they will stay with us for a couple of days and then return to the forest. It's a good thing that the rain is so heavy. It will cool down the earth and the fires will subside. Claire was initially wary of the predator and said no one could really know what to expect from the wild animals, but the wolves were behaving very calmly, like ordinary dogs. Each time the girl brought them food, their eyes shone with gratitude and they even wagged their tails. So the wolf pack stayed with the forester and his granddaughter for several weeks. Then, one day, they simply left and never came back. The danger passed, and the call of the wild beckoned the gray animals back into the forest. It was time for Claire to move to the big city. It was hard for the old man to let his granddaughter go to foreign lands, but what could he do? It was time for her to start college. Student life swallowed the young woman completely. Claire came home occasionally, mostly on holidays, but she also shared her successes and experiences with her grandfather because there wasn't anyone more important to her in the world. Paul continued to do what he loved. Of course, the house became completely empty without his granddaughter, but the never-ending chores at work and meeting a good friend brightened up his loneliness. The young forester, Edward, had been living in the village for a long time. He was in his 30s and had led a rather secluded lifestyle ever since his fiance died. When Edward was appointed Paul's partner, the men quickly became friends. The old man had extensive experience in forestry, so he was happy to share his knowledge with Edward, pinning high hopes on the smart young man. Edward was always willing to help his friend. He would chop firewood and bring him food and keep him company. 
Grandpa Paul was impatient to introduce his granddaughter to the young man, because he thought Edward could make a great husband for her. It was a typical fall evening. The rain was drumming on the glass, and the wind whirled in the fallen leaves. The old man sat near the fireplace in his favorite rocking chair, warming himself with herbal tea. His eyes were tired and closing against his will. But a sudden knock on the door woke Paul right up. It was clear. What happened? The grandfather asked his granddaughter, who was soaking wet. What made you go such a long way in this awful weather? Quickly, get inside, you need to warm up. Grandpa, I missed you so much. Claire threw herself on the old man's neck, asking for forgiveness and informing him that she'll be having a baby soon. The old man hurried to comfort his distressed granddaughter. Months went by, and Claire's belly kept getting bigger and bigger. However, nothing could make the young woman happy. She used to lie in bed for hours, facing the wall and flooding the pillow with tears. Paul couldn't help himself when he saw his granddaughter crying like that. He put on a jacket, took his gun, and headed for the city. Paul easily found the man's house, because everyone in the city seemed to be talking about him. There was loud music coming from behind the high fence, and the guests were obviously having the time of their lives. Paul decided against using his gun because he realized that he wouldn't just cause trouble for himself, but also jeopardize his granddaughter's future. The man easily got inside the yard and stopped in front of the elegant bride and groom table. The old man screamed, blaming the young man for ruining Claire's life. The young people didn't even have time to utter a single word in response as the guards grabbed Paul by the arms and let him out. Of course, he was upset, but there was nothing else he could do. But on the other hand, he was already feeling better, having expressed his anger to the awful young man. Unfortunately, more problems were awaiting Paul upon his return home. He was greeted by his friend, Edward. Claire was missing and nowhere to be found. The man called the locals and started searching for Claire. They combed every inch of the village and surrounding areas and went deep into the forest. The grandpa's heart was jumping out of his chest, terrified at the thought of what could have happened. Having lost all hope, the forester headed to the river and that was the right call. This time, his old wolf friend came to his aid, the one who asked for the man's help to save his family from the fire many years ago. The old man saw his granddaughter sitting by the tree. She was terrified as an entire wolf pack encircled her. Paul immediately recognized the pack of predators as his friends whom he had once saved from certain death. Don't be afraid, dear. Grandfather held out his hand, hugging Claire by her shoulders. These are good wolves. Remember how you took care of them in our barn? They remember your smell and care. They won't harm you. Grandpa, they saved me. I was about to do something terrible. I wanted to end my life in the river, and the wolves surrounded me from all sides. And they didn't let me go in, Claire whispered, wiping away her tears. After that incident, Claire quickly got her act together. The woman gave birth to a beautiful baby and devoted herself entirely to raising her son. The house of the old huntsman was now filled with fun and mischievous laughter. Paul was delighted to see his granddaughter recover from all she had been through and loved to spend time with his great-grandson. Edward used to come over to visit the forester, but now he came to see Claire and her son without even realizing it. Claire stole his heart. Edward helped her around the house and spent hours with the baby. And then one day, he asked Claire to marry him, and she was pleased to say yes. <laughs>